About five days ago, the international non-government organization that shall not be named passed a ceasefire resolution for the Middle East. But then just a couple of days later, the New York Times asks, days after UN ceasefire resolution, has anything changed? Shortly after that, the New York Times headlines reads, two days after UN call for ceasefire, Israeli strikes on Gaza haven't let up. Israel and Hamas appear no closer to negotiating a stop in fighting with significant gaps remaining between them. Not only that, but Israel has stepped up airstrikes against Hezbollah in southern Lebanon, something that Scott Ritter said could not be done. First of all, Scott Ritter said that Israel could not enter Gaza at all. And he said that Israel could not fight a two-front war against Hamas in Gaza and Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. So Scott Ritter was wrong. Has the resolution affected fighting? Senior Israeli officials said that they would ignore the call for a ceasefire, arguing that it was imperative to pursue the war until it has dismantled the military wing of Hamas, the militant group that led the October 7th attack on Israel. UN ceasefire resolution 2728 called for the immediate ceasefire, but also it called for the unconditional release of all hostages and the end to barriers to humanitarian aid. The Jacobin or Jacobin headline reads, Biden is undermining the UN to protect Israel's war. Well, it is, after all, the United States, United Nations. The Jacobin article opinion goes on to say that the Biden administration is flouting the very system of international law that it has demanded that states like Russia and China abide by. Well, they can say states like Russia, China, Ukraine, Turkey, Israel, Palestine, Iran, North Korea, Cuba, Venezuela, all those states. But at the end of the day, the United Nations is funded about 24% or so by the United States. So as the whole world, that's Russians, Ukrainians, Israelis, Palestinians, Chinese, Iranians, North Koreans, everybody, are they starting to wake up and see that this global, unipolar, neoliberal experiment of a international non-government organization is not working. It's like there's regional conflicts globally, there's pandemics, there's natural disasters, and the elite in this like corporatocracy says to everybody, hey, we've got this thing called the United Nations and they're here to help. But the more things change, the more they stay the same. And this is about being human. This is not pro or anti Russian, Ukrainian, Palestinian, Israeli, or whatever.